Hello and welcome to my channel. If you're fascinated by space exploration, you've come to the right place. Today, we're tackling a crucial issue that affects NASA's missions, Plutonium-238. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button to stay updated on all things space. Let's dive in. We have a plutonium problem. NASA's Dragonfly mission, a flying rover designed to explore Titan, Saturn's icy moon, is relying on the last remaining stock of a rare material, plutonium-238. The U.S. is running out, and this shortage is affecting missions like the Europa Clipper, which will rely on solar panels to generate power, despite the distant, cold environment of space. Dragonfly is one of the lucky missions to use plutonium-238. This small 4.8-kilogram piece will power the mission 1.5 billion kilometers away from Earth. But with the U.S. running out, future missions may face challenges. NASA's deep space exploration has always depended on this unique material. Why? Plutonium-238 is not like the plutonium used in nuclear weapons. It doesn't sustain a chain reaction, but emits a steady, reliable heat perfect for powering spacecraft in the coldest regions of space, such as Titan. The Cold War led to an unexpected advantage, weapons-grade plutonium. The U.S. and other countries produced it in vast quantities. However, the byproducts, such as plutonium-238, were of no use for bombs, but NASA saw its potential for space exploration. Unlike its bomb-making counterpart, Plutonium-238 has a half-life of 88 years and emits heat steadily. This heat can be harnessed to power spacecraft, providing energy for deep space missions like Voyager, Cassini, and now Dragonfly. So, why are we running out of plutonium-238? In 1988, the U.S. stopped producing weapons-grade plutonium which also halted the production of plutonium-238. As the stockpile dwindled, NASA was forced to ration its use. In 2010, the U.S. stopped importing plutonium-238 from Russia, worsening the shortage. To solve this, NASA and the Department of Energy restarted production in 2010, but with just 550 grams produced per year. It's not enough to meet future demand. So, what alternatives exist? NASA has explored alternatives like polonium-210, but its short half-life makes it unsuitable for space missions. The best option remains plutonium-238, as it meets all the requirements for long-duration space travel, longevity, safe radiation emission, and stability under extreme conditions. Plutonium-238 is encapsulated in iridium shells, which can withstand high temperatures and pressure, ensuring its safe use during launch and space operations. This process ensures the material remains secure, even in case of accidents. However, production remains slow. The process involves using neptunium-237, which is bombarded with neutrons in a reactor to form plutonium-238. Despite this, the production rate is too low to meet demand for future missions. NASA's Seebeck effect relies on this heat to generate electricity. By using two semiconductors with different electrical properties, a current is generated from the heat produced by plutonium-238, which powers spacecraft instruments for years. NASA has also developed the Stirling engine, which could increase the efficiency of generating electricity from heat. This could reduce the amount of plutonium required for missions, but due to technical challenges, the project was canceled in 2013. With production at just 550 grams per year, NASA is working to scale up production. The Dragonfly mission alone will need 4.8 kilograms, which will take three years to produce. The solution? Increased production. NASA is working with existing facilities to meet future demand. The Oak Ridge National Laboratory aims to produce 1.5 kilograms per year, but more needs to be done to meet the needs of future missions. 
The restart of U.S. plutonium production has sparked interest from other space agencies like the European Space Agency, which is exploring the possibility of building its own manufacturing plant. So, as NASA pushes the boundaries of space exploration, plutonium-238 remains essential. Increasing production will be key to supporting future missions. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more content on space exploration. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Subscribe for more fascinating space topics and keep up with the latest in exploration.